Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Ross. This is part three of my table of contents series where I'm teaching you how to put a table of contents in a Microsoft Access report. If you haven't watched parts one and two yet, what are you, what are you doing here? Go watch parts one and two first, then come on back. All right, so in part two, we got to this point where we have the page header here. We got the, uh, or excuse me, the report header. We got the title page. We got a blank table of contents now because it gets deleted the first time it runs through. And then we got our data. So what we have to do is we have to open up this report once, go to the last page, then close it and reopen it again, but tell the database not to mess with the page numbers the second time. All right, how are we gonna do that? Well, let's go back out here. Let's tackle the part about going to the last page first. Now, Research as I did, I spent a little while Googling this with the Google machine. There is no way with VBA to open a report and go to the last page. Like with a form, you can open it up and move through the records. There is a go to record command doesn't work with reports in print preview mode. So Sammy, add that to the list for the access team that you should be able to open up a report and programmatically go to any page. You can't do it. So we have to rely on our old friend send keys yes 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 i know i'm not a fan of send keys but there are some things you just have to use send keys for that there is no other programmatic way to do so we're going to have to use send keys if you never used send keys before don't worry it's really easy you can go watch this video if you want to it's basically it sends keys as if they were typed on the keyboard as if you were sitting there and you hit it yourself and I try not to use send keys for anything that's automated, but in this particular case, we kind of need it. So what we're going to do is after we open the report, we're going to say send keys. Now, the way that you can get to the last page of a report is if you, the user, hit the end key on your keyboard. All right, but we're going to make access do that for us. So inside of quotes, inside of curly braces, put the word end. Just like that, comma true, and that just tells access to wait until that's finished processing which is necessary if you got multiple keys but that's just one key so it should work in other words open the report and immediately hit the end key and that'll move to the last page of the report i know it's cheesy but it works don't try doing this in anything that's automated by the way if you've got some kind of like nightly event that runs and maybe prints out this report for you no make sure this isn't a button that you click yourself because send keys is not reliable this this might fail one out of 50 tries all right, save it, debug, compile, ready, hit the button, boom, and you're, out, and, you're, and you're automatically on the last page. Now, the benefit of that is if you open up the table of contents, all the data is in there now, see? So now we got all the data in our table, and that's, that's just fine. So now what we can do is close this and open the report a second time, but we have to tell the report, don't change the table of contents stuff. Leave it, because we already generated it. How are we going to do that? Well, we can use our good friend, tempvars. And right now I know Adam is somewhere clapping. So what we're going to do is, in here, we're going to say tempvars, make some kind of a variable. We'll call it make toc, and we'll say that's equal to true. Okay? Now, in the report, let's go to the report. Where's uh, the customer contact report? Here it is. In here, we're going to say if temp bars make toc equals true then do this stuff otherwise don't mess with it don't insert the stuff again we've already inserted it okay so now back to my button now that we've done that now we can open the report and display it display Okay, but we got to close it first. All right, so we're going to do command dot close AC report customer contact R comma AC save yes. I, I put AC save yes in there all the time because, and this is for you, the developer, because you don't want to make some design changes, run your VB coder or macro, and it closes the object and, and it doesn't save it. And your end users won't have access to make design changes because they are using an ACCDE file. So don't worry about that. So always, I always use AC save yes. Okay. And now that we've run it through once, 
closed it. Now we can open it a second time. I'm going to copy this. All right, paste that here. This should actually say close and reopen the report. All right, now I'm going to say make TOC is false and open the report again. Okay, so what are we going to do? We're going to set the temp bars, make TOC to true, open the report. It's going to generate the table of contents, close it, and then reopen it and tell it not to regenerate that table of contents the second time. Now, one other thing we're going to put in here, you need a do events right there. Do events just lets access process background stuff. And I messed with this for about a half an hour before I realized that a do events fixes the problem. And I'm not going to make you walk through it all. Just you need to do events there. Or, or if you have my status function, for those of you who've been following my videos for any length of time, you know I've got this box here called a status box where I can display information. My status function has a do events in it right there. So what you can do is you can, instead of putting it do events by itself here, you can put some status in here. Like you can do status generating TOC like that. So it shows the user what's going on, right? And then here you can do, you know, before you close it, you can do status, you know, opening report like that. So it just looks like something's going on. And then down here you can say status done, right? But the status has the do events in it. So that, that takes care of that problem. Okay, all right, save it, close it, debug compile, of course, come back out, meow, we're going to close everything down, open my main menu back up, and let's click the button, boom, and you'll see it, you'll see it show up once and then disappear and then reopen it again, all right, which is what we wanted. Now, page two, let's look at this, table of contents, let me make this bigger so you can see everything, oh, look at that, three, four, five, oh, Oh, that looked nice. And it starts on page three. See? Isn't that special? See? And the last one, Peregrine Took, Fool of a Took, is on page nine. Let's make sure that's correct. Come over here. Page nine. Let's let's get rid of that gray background and the border around this. A couple little more formatting things here. I just wanted this to, sh to be on here to show you what it looks like at first. Let's get rid of that background color. Let's make it white. Let's get rid of this border format, shape outline, transparent, save it, close it, open it. Okay. Looks good. Table of contents looks good. Now, if we did have to make a major update to our data here, let's say, for example, um, let's say we lost a bunch of customers. Let me delete these customers here. Delete. Uh, oh, we got order to, we got related records. Okay. Yeah, I'll see. Oh, all right. It deleted a few of them. So let's see if it changed where Peregrine Took is. Let's make sure. Okay, come over here. And Peregrine Took is on page seven now. See how it updated? Okay, if we go to the end, let's make sure. Oh, yeah, blank page eight. That sometimes happens. Let's see, page seven. There you are, Peregrine Took. Beautiful. And there you go. That's it. I want to say that's it. That's not like that was all. It's not like it's simple to do this. But, you know, you, you, you follow along with me and I'll show you stuff. Um... Now, there's one problem that remains, and that is, unfortunately, the way this is set up, the table of contents can only be one page in size. If it spills onto a second page, all the other page numbers are going to be wrong because when this opens up the first time, this comes in as a blank page. We just saw it earlier, right? And so the report calculates all these page numbers based on that first page only being one page long. OK, so if your table of contents is going to spill over onto two pages, you have to dynamically update these page numbers. And that's a little bit trickier. But I will show you how to do that in the extended cut for the members. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut videos. And of course, gold members can download these databases and you have access to the code vault. Now, one way to get around this limitation is instead of putting the table of contents in the page or excuse me, in the report header, you could put it in the report footer and call it an index. Okay. And, and that way, just instead of having this sorted by page number, you could sort that list by the person's name, right? Call it an index, and then they can easily look it up that way. So that's another thing you could do. Okay. But if you want to learn how to make this thing size dynamically, then that's going to be covered in the extended cut. A little, little bit more programming involved.
Do you like this stuff? Do you like learning with me? Do you like my style? My cool? <laughs> if you like learning with me, come to my website and check out all my developer lessons that are available. I got lots of them. I got 45 at last count. And each one's at least an hour long. Some of them are like three or four hours long. But uh, check them out. I teach you VBA the way that it's supposed to be taught from the beginning. We go through all the basics, and then we slowly get more advanced. And by the time you're done, you'll know as much as me. Well, pretty almost. Well, okay, maybe not. A little bit more than me, maybe. I don't know. We'll figure that out, out later, I guess. <laughs> but that's going to be your tech help video for today. I hope you enjoyed this little mini series. I hope you learned something. Juan, thank you very much for the question. If you guys got questions like this, you want to see how to do something in Access and you can't find anyone else that's done, you know, an article or a video on it, well, let me know. And uh, I did see a couple of other articles and some videos on doing table of contents uh, when I was doing my research. And uh, some of them are pretty, pretty decent, but they just, I, I have my own flair for things. I like to put things together my way sometimes. But um, yeah, that's going to do it. Uh, live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down at the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the Join button you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn Access and you haven't tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours, go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, Level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two. It's free. Okay, want to get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the Tech Help page, and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. 
I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.